name is Sahar Rashid. Um, I'm a third year aerospace engineer at University of Texas at Austin. Um, my background is mostly in controls and electronics engineering. Um, so I'm the controls and electronics um, engineering lead at 512 Hyperloop. Uh, 512 Hyperloop is a 100% uh, undergraduate um, Hyperloop team um, and we're kind of fully supported by the university and we're kind of making our way to see how far as we can go. Uh, in terms of my background, um, I got into electronics and controls in high school. Um, I used to be involved in a robotics program called First Robotics. Um, and through that, I was given the opportunity to kind of build an invention um, with a $10,000 grant from MIT Invent Team um, Foundation. And with that, I kind of began my foray into like microcontrollers and PCBs um, and electronic systems and understood that like, although I wanted to be an aerospace engineer because I love rockets and I love planes, um, I wanted to more go into control theory and what are the uh, avionics behind those systems. Um, so my dad is an engineer and I've always kind of looked up to him as some someone I wanted to kind of be. Uh, I started doing a lot of STEM stuff as I was younger. I First robotics I started in fifth grade. Um, that's an excellent program to get kids into STEM, especially uh, girls. Uh, so it starts off as Lego robotics and it moves on into like kind of technical robotics with like um, kind of pre-made parts and then there's a higher level where it's custom parts. Um, so I went through all three of those levels and I understood that like this is what I really wanted to do. Um, I always kind of felt like um, building with my hands was kind of like my favorite thing about doing robotics. Um, although I kind of want to do electronics and controls, um, in high school I was a hardware engineer um, on my robotics team. My nickname was uh, Sahardware. Um, <laughs> so it kind of it kind of turned into um, I was in an environment that I really loved um, because we had a really full like support for girls in STEM at my um, middle school and high school and my robotics um, programs, which is something that not all girls have access to. But I'm really really um, happy that I did, and I continued on with it forever. It's well, I've been doing it as long as I can remember. <laughs> Engineering means to me kind of, um, it's problem solving. Um, so you take you take a challenge and each challenge is completely different in every single way, shape or form. Um, and you kind of try to understand exactly what goes through it. You break, out, you break it down into a step-by-step -step process and you solve that problem. Every single thing can kind of be broken down to um, that kind of standard. So for Hyperloop, uh, the problem was uh, how do we control a magnetic levitation in real time? Um, so we had to figure out a solution step by step and like figure out what was the best way to do that. Um, so that's what engineering kind of means to me. It's not a really good answer, but I can't think of anything else. <laughs> Um, based on my experience, it is. Um, so like I said earlier, my um, high school and middle school robotic, robotics experience was very good. They had a lot of support for girls in STEM, and I kind of w became naive to what like the actual hardship it is to be a female in the STEM field. Because um, we had about 40% girls in that program, um, so I was not exposed to, I guess, like some of the things in, when I was younger. Um, and I came to the university, and everything kind of changed. Um, I had, I used to work in a machine shop, I was a welder, um, I came to university and I tried to do that and I was rejected because females don't weld. Um, then I went into controls because it was a little easier for me to kind of foray into. Um, and I'm the only girl on my Hyperloop team. Um, it's been difficult. We have 70 members. Um, and being the only female is uh, one of the hardest things I've done for a very long time. Um, I think it's it's difficult because it's not something that people are used to. Um, it's it's hard to understand like do you treat them as a female or do you treat them as an engineer? And everyone kind of approaches it in a different way. Um, so we have a couple design organizations at our university. Um, I happen to be the only female lead on like there are five design organizations, and by design organizations I mean in, interdisciplinary teams where you take people of different engineering majors and make them work together to build a project. Um, we have no female leads on those except for me um, out of the entire university which is a huge huge problem um, in my opinion because there's nowhere for me to look up to, there's no one for me to reference to um, and there's no one for me to kind of like do this together with. 
So being on your own is, um, it's really difficult, but like kind of you learn to have tough skin um, and you learn to kind of understand that in engineering first um, and then kind of other like human resources stuff later. Um, because in the end, I want to work on this project um, and I'm not going to let anyone hold me back from doing that. And it's worked out really well. Our, my team is very supportive of me. Um, and I'm really proud of them for kind of like being able to like figure it out um, because this is the first time some of them have worked with a female engineer as well um, because female engineers don't usually take leadership positions in orgs like this. I'm not really sure why yet and I really like to change that. Um, so I'm involved in a couple leadership organizations as well at UT. Um, so uh, Women in Aerospace for Leadership and Development um, is one of the big ones that I'm a part of and uh, we're really trying to kind of restore that confidence and allow them to kind of like um, stand their ground in a um, engineering argument, understand like the context that they're coming from and be able to communicate it because communication is absolutely key. I, that was a rant. <laughs> Yeah. Would you like me to answer that now? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, so, our university approaches it in a very different way. Um, we approach women in leadership to be women leading women. Um, and that's really great for kind of like boosting their confidence at the beginning. Um, but I believe the main problem, at least at the University of Texas at Austin, I'm not really 100% on what some of the other environments are because I haven't been exposed to them. Um, but I believe that we need to do kind of take out gender and just promote leadership to all. Um, so we need to raise those ratios to like 50-50 um, and promote leadership to everyone at the same time. Um, because you've got you've got the, the boys in STEM who have been doing this forever, um, who are also not taking leadership positions, and they also need to be able to step up and communicate, because communication is the biggest thing to kind of I guess push forward in these types of situations. Um, so I believe one of the problems is that it's really hard for females to communicate with males in an engineering environment, um, especially in terms of trying to figure out the best best way to phrase this. Um, in, in terms of leadership positions, to try to get like the respect that you need to be able to successfully um, like create an efficient um, team and have, allow everyone to work together at the same time. So there should be like nothing holding you back. Um, so what my organization does is we try to mix the genders. Um, so it's not just women learning how to lead women, it's women learning how to lead in general. Um, because that's something that's really important. Um, and the more women that learn how to lead, the more, more women there are who, to communicate with each other. And communication is such a huge key part to engineering itself. <laughs> I don't think I answered that properly, but... Um, I think the challenges are not being taken seriously. Um, because, and like, under, a lot of females don't get the same opportunities that I did when I, in my STEM background. Um, so it's hard for a lot of other people and even like other my fellow um, like classmates who are females to understand um, the background that I'm coming from because I had a lot of controls engineering experience before. Um, yeah, so the challenge is like being able to express um, the ex like the background experience that you come from. Um, so when you first see kind of like a female in, in engineering in, in an engineering team, um, usually your first thought is like, oh, they're going to be like the marketing person or the business person. Um, so it's hard to take them seriously and like understand that like they are also from the same educational background as you. Um, they have that same background experience that you had in high school. Um, and like like I said, I was privileged enough to experience that, but not a, not everyone was. So it's hard for me to communicate that like I do understand what I'm doing and it's not something I learned in class, it's something I've already applied um, because I believe the, the problem is that girls don't get too many opportunities to apply what they've learned um, and like providing that as well along with communication is like the best way to solve some of these challenges that I face. Um, but like even in terms of like challenges that I face like even this week, um, it's, about, it's about thinking about engineering first. Um, for real, because uh, you can you can 
you can kind of like take everything on like a very like it's how people like interact with each other um, but if you if you really stand your ground um, it's it's easier to be able to do that and I think more female engineers need to be able to do that because um, we used to have some girls on our team um, but they were they were slightly scared away by the fact that like they would either have to say yes all the time or they would have to go against things that they knew were like um, not correct because they were not kind of being listened to um, so it goes back to that communication thing that like they were not able to assert themselves and um, the other people that they were working with were not able to listen to them. Um, so not being taken seriously is, I think, the biggest challenge that I faced. Um, my advice would be to stick with it. I've, um, so many of my friends have kind of like moved on because they're like, my passion is engineering, but I, I'm having a very difficult time, so I'm just gonna go with like a secondary passion. And I've talked to them, like they, they, would, they dropped out about a year ago, and they're not super happy. So kind of stick whatever makes you happy. Um, of course, like if you're if you're not feeling engineering, then it, it's not for everyone. Don't feel forced into engineering um, because a lot of girls do that because they feel like oh there's not enough females, so I need to be a female engineer. Um, but you should not be doing it because um, you feel like there needs to be more female engineers. You should be doing it because you want to be an engineer. Um, and if you want to be an engineer, um, it's my best advice is to stand to your ground. Um, understand truly understand what you're working with. Um, kind of like don't fake it until you make it. Um, kind of continue to reinforce yourself over and over again. Uh, because fake it till you make it is the advice that a lot of people give to me. Um, and it, in my experience, it has not worked for me. Um, because to be able to really communicate properly, you really need to understand where you're coming from, where you are right now, um, in terms of your knowledge and your expertise. Um, so kind of, if you, if you love to do engineering, then focus on engineering and really understand um, the material that you're trying to communicate. Um, so I've been working on a lot of projects. Uh, in high school, I did um, I got a $10,000 grant from the Lemelson MIT Foundation to build a GPS-enabled identification device for the blind and visually impaired. Um, that was my first thing I did with microcontrollers, and I loved every second of it. Um, it was actually an all-girl team, um, and I really enjoyed being able to do that in high school because um, it allowed me to really expand out and do as much as I could um, without anything really holding me back. Um, because there weren't very many female engineers on that team. Um, it's not really because it was all female, it was just there were so few of us um, that we were. I was able to do a lot more on that project. Um, another project I worked on was kind of like a um, pitch yaw role identifier for um, helicopters for um, kind of movie making and uh, missile ranging. Um, so I worked with a defense company um, that allowed us to kind of like use their resources and facilities to kind of do research on like how we can do real time um, encoding of uh, different orientations. Um, so it's kind of like making a physical, like a mechanical gyro instead of an electronic gyro. Um, and then the Hyperloop, the Hyperloop uh, project is definitely my favorite one. Um, being able to build like a actual magnetic levitation system um, that's supposed to go at high speeds and being able to work with all of the, the components that would go into that as a control system, like hardware in the loop, which NASA is still working on, um, real-time OS, which is as if you create your own, it's absolutely amazing to be able to see how like the magic of software and how it controls everything together. Um, other than that, uh, a lot of my projects have been like very leadership based. I'm trying to get uh, more people, girls and boys, uh, into the world of STEM, but like not really forcing them, but understanding that like this is what they want to do. Um, so I was involved with a lot of mentorship programs um, for younger kids, for elementary school kids and middle school kids, to because if you start early then they really have a true understanding and they kind of reached a point where I am where I don't really even remember where I started doing engineering. I've just been doing it all my life and I love every second of it. Um, I
probably would have taken um, a more business management route um, because I really enjoy being a project manager. Um, I, when I used to do, oh, another project I did was First Robotics, um, which was an amazing experience. That's a really, really great organization that's um, good for kind of introducing kids into STEM and allowing them to work hands-on with systems before they even um, hit college. Um, but I was a project manager in those types of design groups. I was a project manager in my um, the, G the project for the blind visually impaired. I'm a project manager on Hyperloop, and I really enjoy managing kind of like these engineering projects and understanding how they go through it. And that's not something you really need an engineering degree for. Um, so if I had not kind of I guess um, followed through with engineering, I probably would have gone to a kind of a project management path of uh, business. Um, in five to ten years, I hopefully will be working full time for in the aerospace related company. Um, there are not very many of them, so the competition is very high. Uh, but I would like to go do that and then go back and get my MBA and go back into project management again. So. Thank you so much. <laughs>